Hello, my name is Larry Gard. I'm the Artistic Director of the Carpenter Science Theater Company at the Science Museum of Virginia. I'm sitting here in the Eureka Theater. It is July of 2008, which is hard to believe. And we are in the middle of our summer run of a, a wonderful show for young children called All About Weather from a Windbag. And I'm wearing my windbag costume. I'm playing the role of the windbag this summer along with another actor. We're trading off days. Today I happen to do the performances. And uh, as we have in the past, we're having a great time presenting live theater in a science museum. The Science Museum of Virginia is a world-class institution, a very large uh, and well-known science center. And being a major science center in the world, it's nice to have that option for the visitor of a theater experience. Uh, theater communicates uh, some very specific things for us. It communicates the humanity behind the scientific process. It communicates a lot of things that people don't realize about scientists being human beings. A lot of people think about scientists as being uh, rather cold and detached. They forget that the scientific process is something that blossoms out of humanity and our curiosity as humans. And so what theater does in a science museum, like the Science Museum of Virginia, is remind people and teach people about the impact that humanity has on science and, and vice versa. An interesting aspect of our programming here was mentioned to me, actually uh, I was made aware of it by an actor who was uh, starring in one of our productions here, who came up to me after a performance and said, Larry, you know, it's interesting that, that uh, a lot of the audiences that come to see Carpenter Science Theater Company productions are non-theater audiences who are being introduced to live theater for perhaps the first time in their lives. And not only children, but adults as well. I'm very proud of the fact that we're able to reach between 23,000 and 30,000 people a year, the majority of whom are non-theater audiences and introduce those people to a quality theater experience and create in them an appreciation of the art form and a desire to attend more theater enrichment. One of the things I'm very excited about that has occurred over the last year and a half of this current three-year grant uh, um, period is Finally, we have been able to, uh, to get some artistic validation from the Virginia Commission for the Arts. I'm very proud and happy about that. Our uh, production that we tour now of Shakespeare and Galileo is appearing in the 2008-2009 Touring Performing Arts Directory that the Arts Commission distributes every year. And now we have just found out that once again, we have been accepted into the Performing Arts Touring Directory of the Virginia Commission for the Arts for 2009 and 2010. And not only are we accept, accepted into that directory for Shakespeare and Galileo, but our storytelling presentations have been accepted into the Touring Directory. So we will be able to offer to schools in Virginia uh, touring performances of both Shakespeare and Galileo and storytelling. And I'm very pleased and happy about that. That represents a great expansion of our outreach programming and it's programming that actually pays for itself. The uh, 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 programming that we do outside of Richmond in terms of the tours um, pays for itself from the fees that we charge to those venues. Uh, that gets deposited directly back into the uh, Carpenter Science Theater Company's accounts to pay for those expenses of the actors and travel and, and uh, all of that. 
This is an exciting time for the Science Museum of Virginia. We have uh, wonderful new leadership here. We have uh, new philosophies, new directions that we're going in. Uh, one of the biggest new directions that we are experiencing with the Carpenter Science Theater Company is even more of an expansion into the galleries. Uh, the addition of living history, we're going to have actual uh, historical characters present in the galleries at times throughout any given year that will interact with uh, museum visitors directly, but also with each other. For example, we're entertaining the idea of um, great debates on the museum floor between scientists. Um, have two scientists, perhaps um, Edison and someone from Westinghouse, and of course Edison was at odds with Westinghouse and Tesla. Uh, regarding uh, whether alternating current and direct current or direct current would be the best option for electrical use. Uh, that debate could take place on the museum floor and would be dramatically uh, pleasing and interesting for, for and intriguing for an audience to experience. All kinds of those kinds of debates exist in, in the history of science that we will explore. Those are just brief examples of many, many ways of bringing science alive through theater on the museum floor using living history. Uh, and that's some, an area that we're going to be uh, expanding into. Considering all of the great things happening at the Science Museum right now, and uh, all of the wonderful things we're looking forward to in our expansion and, and uh, continuance of, 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 of offering quality science education to the public. I would like to say thank you to the Carpenter Foundation for providing so much of your valuable support to our theater programming here and I want to tell you that we are very much looking forward to continuing providing uh, the magic of live theater as an educational tool in this world-class science center, the Science Museum of Virginia.